Welcome back. Now that we have looked at some DAG architectures, we're going to move on to ADC architectures and or to digital converters. Uh, in general, ADCs are more complex than DAGs. And in fact, ADCs typically use a DAG as part of their circuitry. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the simplest or uh, one of the simplest ADC architectures, which is the counter uh, ADC, also referred to as the ramp ADC. Uh, here is a block diagram of a ramp ADC. Notice that it uses a comparator, um, and then uh, it has a counter, and it has a DAC. The idea is that there is an analog sample provided at the input of the comparator, then that's fed through some logic uh, to the counter. The counter outputs the digital output, uh, which is fed into the DAC and fed back to the comparator. The way this works is as follows. Um, an analog sample is initially provided at the beginning of, uh, of a counting cycle. Uh, maybe it's coming from a sample and hold circuit. And so it's provided at the input of the comparator. Um, the counter gets reset to zero and it starts counting from zero upwards. And at every step, it produces a digital output, which goes from zero to the full scale range when all the bits are equal to one. Um, and for every step in that count, the output of that counter is um, converted into its analog equivalent via a DAC, and it's fed back to the comparator. Uh, so since, since it's starting from zero, initially uh, the output of the counter is going to be lower than the analog sample, but as it goes increasing, at some point, the output of this DAC uh, is going to exceed the value of the analog sample, at which point the output of the comparator will trip, uh, through some logic, it will inhibit the counter and uh, the digital output will be frozen. That will be the value of the, uh, of the digital output uh, equivalent of that particular analog sample. Now, in terms of uh, this configuration, an obvious advantage is its simplicity. typically referred to as a ramp because essentially the value of that uh, DAC keeps uh, ramping up until it reaches or until it equals the analog sample input. Uh, but one of the main limitations is uh, the speed. And the reason for that is we're starting the count from zero every time um, and we have to allow for, in the case where the analog sample has the, uh, the maximum output voltage or the maximum input voltage, excuse me, we have to allow for two to the n counts. And so we can see that as n increases, uh, the number of uh, output states, digital output states increases by two to the n. So basically, as n increases, um, number of counts increases exponentially is equal to two to the n. And therefore, that will be the major limitation of this circuit. Um, there uh, is a slight variation of this circuit, which is referred to as the tracking ADC, which basically uh, starts from the assumption that uh, a change in the analog input is going to be small from one sampling instance to the next. And so instead of using a counter that needs to get restarted to zero every time, it uses an up and down counter which gets started at the, at the last value of the digital output. Uh, but in that case, you're losing the advantage of simplicity because obviously you need more complex logic in order to uh, implement the tracking ADC. But this is in essence the operation of a ramp ADC.